I am so grateful to be hunkered down in my shop, my COVID-19 bunker, and just working on guitars and, put, and putting together these videos for everyone's benefit. Okay, here is a quick guitar tech shop fire hazard tip. When you're throwing out those 9 volt batteries, tape off the terminals. Even if there's just a little bit of juice left in that battery, watch this. See that? Could burn your shop down. Tape off those terminals before you chuck them in the garbage. 065176 062980. So we've got two mid 60s J45s in, in for similar but different jobs. So this one recently had a neck reset, and you can see that on either side of that heel it was painted black. This is a real challenge when doing Gibson neck resets. The guitar is assembled in the white and then the finish is sprayed over top so when you go to pull the neck off you're always going to have issues at that junction where the face of the heel joins the sides. Now this neck has never been off but there's still lots of room and it doesn't really need a neck reset. This is the back of Al's uh, J45. Back of the neck, lots of wear there on the cowboy cords, that's for sure. This one doesn't look like it was played as much, and it looks like that uh, that back may have a bit of extra finish on it. And you can see that these are definitely the original machine heads. Here's the one guitar, and here's the other guitar. So these are the machines they were using back then, and they seem to work pretty good. No need to change them. So let's flip them over and look at the tops. This guitar had the bridge plate removed and a replacement rosewood bridge put on. Now I filled that replacement bridge and recalculated and slotted with the, with the new bridge slotting jig to get the intonation perfect. And it has the compensated nut. So this has the LR Bags Anthem SL system in it. This one is completely acoustic and we're kind of bantering back and forth uh, with this customer considering putting a K&K but we're going to be doing that in the new year. Right now it's in for regulation. I'll be adjusting the intonation at the saddle and at the nut on this one. And that is the period thick plastic pick guards that they were putting on these things. This is Al's guitar and this is Fred's guitar. So the same sort of heavy plastic pick guard. It was just a Sign of the times, that's what they were doing at that point in time. And the top on this one has a couple of cracks that were repaired at some point and they still seem to be solid so we're going to just let sleeping dogs lie. Fred's guitar has the one crack on the lower boat here but the kerfing goes along here. It's not going anywhere. It's not even worth looking at. And it looks like it's been filled and glued anyway. No more cracks though, the top is actually in pretty remarkable shape when you think of the vintage. It was about 26 years ago I made up this bone and rosewood sandwich for Al's J45. I did end up sort of scratching across there and just ultra tweaking that intonation to get it right on the money. We also had changed out the uh, plastic pins way back then with these solid rosewood uh, Michael Gurian uh, pins that uh, just about everybody's using now. This is actually a fairly common job that I do on these uh, Gibson acoustics that come with the adjustable bridge, the metal trough with the with the thumb wheel adjustments and stuff. It's just the whole idea is wrong. So what happens here is we get this rosewood and bone sandwich and then that whole thing basically butts up against the top and drives the soundboard. Al will be coming back in the new year. This does have the big 3 16th inch thick plywood bridge plate. Uh, that's going to be coming off and at that time I will make a brand new bridge or at least fill this wider slot in with solid rosewood and then just router it for the regular 1 8 inch width. And at this end this is the compensated nut I did for Al. I don't know. It's got to be 26 years ago. Maybe longer. This guitar has really stood the test of time. It's super stable. Just put a fresh set of strings on, light fret dress, and he's good to go until a little later on in January when we uh, finally get that big thick plywood 
bridge plate out of there and put a proper one in and that'll really open up the voice of his guitar. Now on the other tech deck, on the XLT, we've got Fred's J45, same vintage, mid-60s, and that's got the replacement rosewood bridge and as I mentioned earlier I re-slotted it for perfect intonation and it also has the compensated nut. This one has already had that heavy bridge plate swapped out. They did a great job. There's a much lighter solid wood bridge plate in there. That really opens the guitar up. I've got another four J45s, mid-60s, late-50s, all coming in to get those bridge plates uh, swapped out for a much lighter solid wood one. And that about wraps it up for these two mid-60s J45s. We've got a couple of ES-335s coming up this week as well as a Gurian guitar that's in for a neck reset. One last thing before I go, I want to shout out a thank you to all of the subs and your support over this past five or six years. Yesterday, my subscribers reached the 10,000 mark. And I thank you all sincerely for your unwavering support over these last few years. So I'm going to bring you lots more to keep you entertained while they search for and distribute the silver bullet for this unbelievable virus plague thing that we've been facing. So stay tuned, we've got lots more to come. Cheers.